What up? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And look at you. You done stumbled upon little OTB Saints, where we bring you all the latest black and gold coverage. Who are the Saints going to draft? Who's going to be their quarterback? What does the salary cap look like? All that information and more. Hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe. It's always our pleasure to catch up with our next guest, Ross Jackson, host of Locked On Saints, joins us now. Ross, we appreciate the time this morning. Thanks for hopping on. Oh, anytime, my dude. Thanks so much for having me on, man. All right, so uh, before we get to the the on-the-field stuff going on at OTAs for the Saints, like, what's the latest you're hearing with the Saints and the Superdome renovations and this $11 million that is owed because the Superdome's about to host a Super Bowl, and obviously, like, there's not a lot of time for delays there in those renovations. Yeah, it's an interesting story, man. I mean, you know, you've got the LACD saying that the Saints ain't paid their bills, basically, and the Saints (laughs) are saying, well, we ain't paid because you didn't give us any papers, and they're going, what papers are you talking about? So, I don't know. (laughs) Look, the way I keep telling everybody is, like, I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman, and that's – so that's kind of outside of my scope in terms of all that. But I'm sure this is just one of those things where, you know, either they're going to fall in line and they're going to get this corrected or they're not. And if they don't, then it could be – uh, pretty detrimental for, I mean, look, it's already paused the, the Smoothie King renovation. Right. That probably puts a hold already now on the Superdome renovations, which I know, you know, there's there's the Super Bowl part of it, of course, but there's also still the home fan part of it to where yeah. there's a the whole season where Saints fans are going to be in that building, are going to be in that arena and in that stadium for, you know, you know almost at 17 games, but nine games this season with the extra home game going their way. Uh, to me, like those are the things that that's kind of the thing that I think should kind of light the fire up under them so that maybe they can stop talking about all these papers and start moving the paper. You know what I mean? And I think that's got to be the everybody's got to kind of come together on this and, and get it right, not just for the Super Bowl, but for the home. Yeah, fan. yeah I agree with you there. And I'd love to see the Smoothie King Center, uh, you know, get touched up as well. Something we've talked about a long mm-hmm. time here on OTB. So hopefully that does get done. All right, Ross, let's talk about OTAs. Uh, probably the biggest thing. Uh, coming out of OTAs, at least over the last couple of days, it feels like, is Trevor Penning at right tackle. Is, is that somewhere where you think he is going to live? Like, does that feel like the plan moving forward? Yeah, it's been an interesting one to watch. And, you know, uh, John Benton's comments, as well as Jari Evans' comments, both these guys who work very closely with the offensive line, of course, uh, it kind of makes it sound like it's maybe potentially a permanent move for Trevor Penning, assuming that it all works out for him. I think the logic behind it is, look, there's a new system coming in, new roles, new responsibilities. And honestly, let's be real, a system that kind of plays to his strength a little bit, right, in terms yeah. of his aggressive, uh, his aggression, his you know, run-blocking ability, all these other things, his movement ability. Uh, so, you know, in order to kind of capitalize on that, I think they looked at it and went, okay, and, and, and John Benton, New Orleans Saints offensive line coach, used the phrase fresh start and kind of made the move over to that side to say, you know what, you're learning something new, so let's learn everything new and then kind of put him over in this other spot. I, I don't know if it's going to work out, man. And, and look, there's, there's the other piece of it, too, to where you're also moving rookie, uh, Taliesin Fuanga, from the right side to the yeah. left side. And one of the things that we liked about him and draft evaluation and stuff like that when we were kind of watching him and kind of getting some evaluation on him for shows and things like that and over at Saints News Network is that he could play. You know, he was a guy that showed that he can kind of play on both sides throughout his entire playing career, going back even before college. And so, you know, the thing is, do you jeopardize his readiness in favor of the potential for Trevor Penning's longevity? I think that's the one other concern that maybe comes up with it. But, look, the Saints did it well with Eric McCoy when they moved him to center. He's a reason they moved him to guard. Ryan Ramchick when they moved from left side to right side. Landon Young when he's played everywhere on the offensive line. So maybe they get this right again, move Trevor Penning over to right tackle. Maybe that settles them in a little bit, learning something new and learning something from scratch. And then, you know, Taliesin being a guy that can play on both sides, this might work out well for New Orleans. But uh, I think the biggest thing that you kind of have to protect here is the assets. And if you can get both of those guys who are both first-round picks out there, that's a good way to do it. Ross, if you were going right now, and again, this is uh, May 24th, but if you were going left to right, on what you think the opening day Saints offensive line is going to look like, what would that look like for you? Yeah, uh, man, it's it, it, if I'm going with the if I'm if I'm submitting to the idea that Taliesin Fong is at left tackle and then Trevor Penning's at right tackle, then I would go Taliesin Fong at left tackle. Uh, I'm going to say early Nick Saldaveri at left guard, but look, there's okay. veteran Shane Lemieux as well as Lucas yeah. Patrick that'll compete there for sure. But I'll, I'll give the early nod to. Uh, Nick Saldaveri, I just can't get past the fact that they traded up to the beginning of day three, the very first pick of day three to go and get that guy. 
I think yeah. he's going to be the one that gets kind of the, that treatment. Then you got Eric McCoy and, and Cesar Ruiz, of course, and then Trevor Penning over on the right side. Um, that's that very well could be what it looks like based upon what we're seeing early on here at OTAs uh, and mini camps. But I'm not going to rule out the idea that the Saints are looking at this as information gathering, and then they still end up swapping Penning back to left and Fuanga back to right if they feel good about where they are. Now, Ross, one of the position groups that we talked a lot about when it was the NFL draft process, but maybe aren't having those same conversations, and you didn't draft a player early at that position is receiver. We mm-hmm. thought, you know, maybe first round, you know, second round, surely, but then Kool Aid's there, and you make the move to strengthen your defensive backfield. Like, what's the latest at receiver? If it's Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, who's that three right now? I think right now, At Perry. Um, they love the way that he finished out the season. He didn't really get going until what week twelve, when uh, Michael Thomas had that injury uh, in Minnesota. And then when he got going, he really got going. I mean, I know he only had, what, 18 receptions, but he was only targeted. You know, I think he was targeted less than 30 times. Still walked away with four touchdowns out of that. So out of the weeks that he played, he had one of the highest touchdown percentage, touchdown to target percentages of, like, any player and everything. Um, His ability to, you know, be able to utilize his speed, but also be the big-bodied guy that can go up there and make some tough catches. We saw another one at OTAs when he went up with one hand over the top of the defense to bring down a pass, eventually with two as he was coming down with you know, remarkable, impressive play. I think I would still give the lead right now uh, to A.T. Perry, and, and I'm not going to rule out Bub Means coming in as a, as a what, fifth-round draft pick out of Pittsburgh, uh, still being a guy that can contribute as well. But I think the thing that helps A.T. out is that the Saints have a wide-open spot right now at the X receiver spot, the kind of split end weak side receiver where Michael Thomas would typically play or has played over the course of the past few years. And A.T. Perry seems like the guy in line to get the at least initial opportunity to compete for that new role. So I think opportunity will be there. The momentum from the end of last season is there. And then, you know, getting the, the talent is absolutely there as well. So I look at him as a potential breakout guy in 2024. All right, Ross, we've kind of buried the lead, but now let's have a fullback conversation. It should have been the the thing that we started (laughs) with. Um, So we know, uh, obviously, San Francisco, and they use Juszczyk all over the place, and he is a valuable piece of their offense. And so you get an offensive coordinator in New Orleans that knows that offense, can see the benefits of the fullback, right? And Mm -hmm. so we can appreciate that. Uh, We've seen Taysom Hill over the last couple of days. I even saw him in a three-point stance, be still, my forever beating heart. (laughs) It looks like there is a plan to have Taysom Hill in the backfield and playing some fullback for this Saints offense. Yeah, and that's going to be really exciting because that just opens up, as you know, a a whole litany of ways for him to be utilized. Sure, he'll be a lead blocker one play, he'll be a decoy the next play, but then he's running a route out to the shallow side on one play, he's running a wheel route down the field another play. There's just so much you can do with a guy of his talent level at that spot and from that spot of deployment. And I don't think that's going to mean that he's not also going to take snaps at tight end, in the slot, out wide, even at quarterback. I think all that's still going to be there. But I think one of the things that this kind of helps to mitigate is all of those times last year where Taysom Hill had this really, really good game and then just wasn't utilized for the next two games. This is one of those things that says, okay, they're finding a way to get Taysom Hill out on the field and keep Taysom Hill out on the field because of all the different ways that he, he can end up uh, being utilized there. And look, uh, you know, Clint Kubiak had his, had his one season with Kyle Juszczyk, and I know there's been a lot of kind of talk around, well, that's not really long enough for him to figure out how all that goes. But look at the way he used C.J. Ham when he was with the Minnesota Vikings as well. I mean, you have seen an emphasis of the fullback. You've seen the emphasis of the fullback anywhere that Clint Kubiak has been and has had the opportunity to be able to, uh, to do that. So I think that that ends up kind of, you know, crediting a little bit to what Clint Kubiak can bring uh, for a guy like Taysom Hill being used out of that deployment, out of that position. And I don't think that Xander uh, Xander Horvath is too far uh, right. off of that either because he's another one of these really, you know, kind of uber-athletic guys from the position who, when Taysom Hill's not lining up in the backfield and he's out in, you know, the slot or wherever else that might be, Xander Horvath could be a guy that ends up sliding in and having a similar effectiveness as a guy that can not only block and carry, but that can also catch the football. Yeah, no question. I remember him out of college. Actually, the Chargers drafted yeah. him. He certainly has some ability with the football in his hands. 
as well. Catching up with our guy Ross Jackson here on OTB. Ross, want to ask you about Spencer Rattler. Now, I did see a great video, by the way, of the rookies out at a function, and they were eating crawfish, and he's like, no, you don't have to tell me how to eat crawfish. I know how to do it. And also complimented the chef on not dusting the crawfish. And so Let he's already <laughs> growing legs with me and I think a lot of the Saints fan base. But what have you seen from him at OTAs here early on? Yeah, man. I, I love the the when you know how you said be still, my forever beating heart. Yes. That was me when he said <laughs> when he thanked the chef for not dusting the crawfish. I was like, Okay, this dude gets it. I he love does. It. Uh, um yeah, no, I look I I think what we've seen from, from Spencer Rattler so far has been a little bit up and a little bit down. Yeah. As you know, the NFL is not a linear experience for guys that are coming in. And so he showed up, rookie minicamp, looked fantastic. No problems calling plays, no problems getting in and out of the huddles, always made the right decision with the football that day. He went 11 for 12 that day, looked really, really good, especially his connection with Bub Needs down the field was awesome, particularly in the middle of the field, which was something that the Saints, particularly in the intermediate area last year, didn't take advantage of too much. Uh, we've seen a little bit more of that from all quarterbacks. Uh, here, but then he got into OTAs this past week and things kind of took a little bit of a step back. Okay, yeah. we had a little bit of trouble, had to re huddle a couple of times, a couple of false starts, threw an interception. The play immediately after he threw the interception, which was off of a tip drill, but his placement on the ball was just way too high uh, for Jacob Cabote. Um, he ended up, you know, trying to get a pass into Kyle Sheets and Isaiah Stalberg, the undrafted free agent um, linebacker, ends up being able to undercut it. Could have had an interception there, but ended up being a pass breakup. Uh, I think the thing that you look at there is this doesn't mean that the, everything's over for Spencer Rattler. It was his first OTA right. practice. It was his first time working with some of the veterans that were there. So timing gets off. You know, when you're when you end up and you're working with a bunch of other guys that are coming in as rookies, you're all kind of working at the same speed. When you've got some, you know, a, a veteran or two or three sprinkled into your rotation, all of a sudden everything speeds up around you. And so I'm really interested to see now how he manages the adversity that he faced. Now he's had, you know, a couple of other practices already this week. We'll be out there again next week and that'll be our opportunity to kind of see him after that first OTA practice. So this just gives us an opportunity to say, okay, that's where the foundation, that's where the baseline is. Now let's watch him and see if he's able to build upon that. So I'm excited to see that from him. He's got all the tools. He's got a lot of upside. I don't think any of that changes because of one OTA practice where he did struggle a little bit. Ross Jackson, host of Locked On Saints. Good enough to join us here on OTB. Ross, we appreciate you making time for us this morning, and we always look forward to the next one. Hey, man, right back at you. I appreciate y'all. Take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you here soon. All right, bud? All right, you as well, the great Ross Jackson. Wow, just amazing black and gold takes right there, Jake. I don't think I've ever heard any takes that are better than the two guys that just gave you that take. And you can keep getting them by going ahead and liking, subscribing, ringing the bell to get notifications when we post. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next OTB Saints.